Hi, my name is Lois Perry and I'm the director of CAR26, the people questioning net zero policy on your behalf. At the end of January, I decided to travel to the north of England to speak to a whole host of people, business people, politicians, scientists, local activists, charity workers and everyday folk to find out what they think about net zero policy and how it is affecting them and other local people. I will be releasing these interviews one by one over the coming days under the banner Lois Goes North. A lot of my focus was on fracking, whether it was a good or bad idea, what's actually involved in the process and what local people think about it. After all, Rishi Sunak and others said that we could proceed with fracking if there was local consent, even though he has foolishly U-turned since. I was very excited to be able to have my first interview with Francis Egan, the CEO of fracking company Quadrilla. It was the first interview he has given for over a year, so a real exclusive giving an understanding of the commercial aspects of fracking and the political challenges his company has faced. Extracts were shown recently on a GB News discussion I had with Nigel Farage, as Egan extraordinarily indicated that his company may be suing the government for them wasting hundreds of millions of pounds of wasted investment due to a sudden change of government policy without any consultation. I met with Lee Anderson, MP for Ashfield, former coal miner and now Deputy Chairman of the Conservative Party. Darling of the Tory party membership, straight talking Lee, made it very clear which side of the fence he sits on. He also made it very clear that our wonderful civil service have a lot to answer for when it comes to our misguided energy policy. Are they too close to those they hand out subsidies to? You'll have to watch. My interview with Ernest Rutter is also highly recommended. Professor of Structural Geology at the University of Manchester and a firm believer actually in man-made climate change, Professor Rutter is also adamant that we should be fracking. The discussion provides a real in-depth explanation of what fracking is, how it's done, what the risks are and how to mitigate them. I highly recommend it for anyone wanting to know more about this important topic and speak knowledgeably about it rather than attempting to understand from the superficial information you hear in the media. Scott Benton. MP for Blackpool, explained how the city was once a thriving northern town and hub of industry and tourism and is now rapidly dying off. He complained that the airport is closed due to net zero policy and whilst fracking could be a great way to revive the city, with companies like Quadrilla offering cheap energy to locals and the ability to create thousands of new jobs, his own government's net zero policy is preventing growth. I met with Mark Butcher who runs an extraordinary charity called Amazing Greys, where people are literally having to choose between eating and heating. We heard Mark's take on the government's failure to ensure we have cheap energy and how ordinary people like him are having to take responsibility for the government's failure. He told me stories of those coming to him for help, such as the lady who turns her fridge off for a few hours each day to save on her electricity bill. Absolutely awful. Businessman David Haythornthwaite, who runs a local football club, also explained what his business has done to help his staff due to the massive hike in energy bills and made it very clear where he stands on net zero policy too. Fracking queen Lorraine Allenson tells an incredible story of what happened to her when fracking came to her rural area back in 2013 and the protesters started to be shipped in. She was a local and could see the opportunities fracking could bring to the community and when she started to speak out, she became the target of a campaign, even receiving death threats. It's a story you need to hear. Nick Buckley, MBE, runs a charity called The Mancunian Way, helping the homeless in Manchester. He has formerly stood as the Reform Party candidate for Mayor of Manchester. Not only was it interesting to hear his opinions on how the government's energy policy is making people choose between heating and eating, he also explains how helping people make some basic choices in life could be the start of rebuilding their self-confidence. Of course, the heat, eat choice was not what he had in mind. A fascinating interview, and your love what he reveals at the end when he describes what people he has helped say when they get their first paycheck. At the end of each interview, I ask each of my delightful interviewees five quick fire questions, which you can see at the end of this video. But before I do, here's just a quick appeal from me. Car26 is fighting your fight. We believe in energy independence and affordable energy. Yes, we are unashamedly sceptical about man-made climate change and believe the only way to remove scepticism is to have more open debate to understand more. We are not funded by billionaires or those in the industry. 
just by normal, everyday people who share our concerns and want us to dig deeper and find out the truth with the ultimate aim of making your energy cheaper and us all more secure. So if you like what we are doing, please go to our website at car26.org where you can contribute to our work. We truly value your support. Also, do enjoy some of our other videos and interviews on our YouTube channel. Energy provides power and so does knowledge. So thanks so much for taking the time to visit us. Fuel freedom. And now, some short answers from my interviewees at Lois Goes North. Climate catastrophe or no climate catastrophe? No climate catastrophe. Okay, fracking or no fracking? Fracking. Fracking or wind farms? Fracking. Excellent. Juicy steak or a salad? <laughs> steak. Oh no, it's different at the moment, isn't it's it? It's steak, but no chips at the moment. Steak. So steak with salad? Steak maybe. with salad, yeah. Yep. Compromise. Excellent. And final question to you, Lee Anderson, MP. Heat or eat? Heat or eat? Mm. It's got to be heat. You can live longer without food than you can without heat. Brilliant. Just simple biology. Climate catastrophe or no climate catastrophe? No climate catastrophe. Overblown. Completely support the line of the previous Republican president of the US. Number two. Um, oh, I don't know what you're going to say now because you've got two U's on fracking. Right. Fracking or no fracking? No fracking locally, but we do need to have an honest conversation with people about national infrastructure. OK. And if they change their minds, the local constituents. OK, fracking or wind farms in general? Um, I would say nuclear. <laughs> that's not an option. <laughs> it should be an option. <laughs> yeah, it should be an option. Yeah, but that's only for electricity, not, not gas. True. Yeah, but anyway, um, a nice juicy steak or a salad? Oh, for goodness sake, that's a ridiculous <laughs> question to ask a right-wing Tory MP. <laughs> Always a steak. Always I'm a steak. certainly not doing vegan January or whatever nonsense that is. No, I've been either. doing dry January and it's coming well, to an end soon. Dry January is one thing, going vegan for the month no, is a completely no, no, different No, ballgame. completely. You've got to have some passion in your life, haven't you? Do. You do. And the final question, thank you so much, is heat or eat? Um, both. Both. I, I think the welfare state is more than generous to allow people to do both. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. You've Pleasure. been absolutely wonderful. Thank you for Thank your you. Time. Climate catastrophe or no climate catastrophe? Well, I've, I've observed the way things have been changing. Um, I remember going into high mountainous regions uh, when I was a um, in my 20s and seeing all of those glaciers, I've seen how they've been treated and I have been shocked in such a short, a short time frame. So I've, I've, I've certainly developed a prejudice as a result of that experience. But quite apart from that, um, uh, the, the rate of change of, um, of, of, of climate is, is, is faster than we and I know that Brian Cat will disagree with this, is faster than, than, than has been recorded in, in, in the geological record throughout the, the, the tertiary period. Okay, uh, obviously, you know, that, that's your interpretation and there are others that disagree with you, but I obviously completely respect what you're saying. So your answer would be climate catastrophe then? <laughs> yes. Okay, two, fracking or no fracking? Um, well, I, I, I think that if it is at all possible, we should have um, a shale gas industry in the UK. Fantastic. Fracking or wind farms? It's not a choice. Right, both. Both. Okay. For... Um... With, with, with all of energy supplies, um, one thing is not the answer. Okay, diversity. Eight or ten things are the answer, okay. used in the appropriate proportions. For different reasons. So both. Um, juicy steak or a salad? Well, I don't particularly like steak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, meat, meat in general then. Just, um, I suppose what, what I'm trying to say there is uh, there's a massive push for us all to not eat meat. Um, I think that is a relatively minor effect. Oh, right. Oh, OK. So you don't think that the production uh, d dairy meat farming is causing particular problems with the, the, the climate? And there are also ways around us as well. Oh, that's very interesting. Thank you for telling me that. Um, five, heat or eat? <laughs> oh, you have to have both. 
You have to have both. Climate catastrophe or no climate catastrophe? No climate catastrophe. Excellent. Fracking or no fracking? Fracking. Yeah, I know the answer to that one. I know the answer to this one as well. Fracking or wind farms? Um, my, I think the, uh, it's not, you, you, you say you know the answer to that one. <laughs> well, I was well no, say. look, I think at the end of the day, what, we, what we've got to have is the most efficient. That, and that can deliver the most cost-efficient energy independently for this country. So if that's a wind farm, I'm okay with a wind farm. I don't have to have fracking. Yeah. I'm not that, you know, set on fracking. I haven't got any investment in fracking. But uh, I think you know, there's no reason, you know, you can't do both. No, absolutely. Uh, and, of I course, mean, you need the fracking how much, to how, out power the wind turbine well, anyway. Well, how much is... Uh, the problem with the problem with uh, wind turbines, and again, it's something that I learned. I don't know whether you're aware of, but sometimes when you get windy, you can be too windy, and you have to turn <laughs> it off. Yeah. You have to turn it off yeah. because it's too windy. So there's a lot of uh, faults yet within that technology. I mean, I'm sure they'll sort it out. I agree. But yeah. uh, no, I mean, I'm not. Renewable energy is not something that uh, you know is is, is a is a swear word for me. I think there's lots of great ideas and great technology, but the most important thing for this country is we're energy independent. That's what I'm passionate Absolutely. about, energy independence. No, I totally agree with you. I'm guessing I might know the answer to this one, although I got it wrong on the last one. Juicy steak or a salad? Juicy steak. Yeah, no, I got that one right. Okay. <laughs> with a salad. <laughs> with a salad. Okay, a nice glass of wine. Heat or eat? Uh, eat every time. Brilliant. And I only say that, and I know we shouldn't take this lightly, but I remember, you know, when I bought my first house, a little terrace house down the road in Kirkham there, you know, didn't have central eating. Okay. Didn't have central eating. And uh, as, when, as long as you went out as a young guy, you know, and a, a few pints and uh, fish and chips <laughs> on the way home, you got into bed, you were warm, you know, you get into the cupboard, so you were right, weren't you? you know, sometimes uh, you get up in the morning and there'd be <laughs> frost on the window on the inside, you know. But uh, you, you were lucky. It survived. <laughs> Climate catastrophe or no climate catastrophe? Oh, I never put climate and catastrophe in the same word. Excellent. Right. Oh, okay. You answered it. Great. Fracking or no fracking? Maybe? Oh, fracking, yeah. for sure. Fracking or wind farms? Uh, if I had to choose, I would say fracking. Excellent. You can have both, but, but if I had to choose, I would say fracking. Excellent. Juicy steak or salad? Oh, it has to be steak. Oh, good. You're a man after my own heart. Heat or eat? You need to have both. Both. Yeah. That's yeah, you you shouldn't be choo you shouldn't be forced to choose between those two things.